Hi there. In this video, I'm going to complete the buffer station project, which was started in the previous video, using structured text language. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Well, let's start the video. If you remember, I wrote this program in the previous video, and now, I want to write two programs, inside these two program organization units. Let's start with the manual POU. Usually, manual programs are simple, just for testing devices. In the current POU, I want to use these two push buttons to run the two belt conveyors. First, let's write a simple program to turn on the buffer conveyor using the red push button, whose name is stop. Now, let's define this variable, as a global variable, which will be connected to the red push button. As you know, it's not common to use a red push button, which is normally close, to turn on a device. But let me use that in the simulation, to display how the task of a push button, can be inverted by using a not operator. Ok, let me define this variable, which will be connected to the first conveyor. Remember, the two belt conveyor are controlled with a number between minus 10 and 10. For now, if the red push button is pressed, then number 5 will be sent to the first conveyor. Otherwise, the conveyor must be stopped with voltage 0. Now, I want a similar program, to turn on the exit conveyor, with the start push button. Note that, the start push button is normally open, and the not operator must be removed. All right. I've finished the programming step inside the manual POU. Like the previous video, it can be tested using the simulation option, but I prefer to complete the project. Now, I want to write a program, which will control the buffer station automatically. First, let me define a new variable, which will be used to store the start stop request. Alright, the first part of my automatic program is simple. Again, I'm using the if statement. If the stop push button, which is normally closed, is pressed, then the running mode variable must be reset. Else if the start push button is pressed, then the running mode variable must be changed to 1, to indicate the buffer system must go to running mode. Well, 
here is a problem. Codesys cannot recognize as the running mode variable. Ok, I must modify it, inside the declaration section. Now, I'm going to write a program to turn of the exit conveyor. This conveyor must be on when the running mode variable is enabled, otherwise it must be off. Its program is simple. Note that, the running mode variable is a boolean data. Therefore, these three expressions are equivalent. Well, let's continue. Now, I'm going to write a program to control the stop blade. Note that, all conditions that can turn on or off the stop blade, must be determined. Let's start with two simple conditions, after that, I'll need to extend the if statement a little. In my project, if the start push button is pressed, then my controller must turn on the stop blade, and when the running mode is false or equal to zero, the stop blade must be off. As you see, there are two red lines, because, after each condition, I've not written then. Now, let's continue. There is another condition to turn on the stop blade. After passing each box, when this sensor produces a positive signal edges, the stop blade must be enabled. Also, when there are not any boxes on the exit conveyor, the stop blade must be off. Therefore, I'll need to use these two sensors, to count the current boxes on the second conveyor. Now, let me add some codes, before the current if statement. First, let me find and use F trick instruction, to detect negative pulses, receiving from the last sensor. Well, here you can see how the F trick instruction can be used. Let me use that, to detect negative pulses, receiving from the last sensor. Similarly, let's use an R trick instruction to detect positive signals receiving from the middle sensor. Now, let me define a new up and down counter. It will count how many boxes are transferring on the second conveyor. Alright, these outputs will be used later. Therefore, I don't need to specify any variable for them, or even, I can clear them. Now, let me define this variable that will be connected to the sensor. Now, let me use the up and down counter, with the produced pulses by these two sensors, to count the current number of boxes on the second conveyor, whose name is exit conveyor.
As you see, if a defined counter, timer, or function is used, CodeZs will detect its input and outputs, and displays a message that helps us to write the program. Now, pay attention to how the Q outputs of the two previous instructions are using, as the inputs of the counter. Also, a code can be continued in the next line, but remember, a semicolon must be used at the end. Now, I can complete this part of my program, based on the positive signal of the middle sensor, and the counter value. First, let's add a condition that can enable the stop blade. If the system is in running mode, and a box has passed from the middle sensor, my program must activate the stop blade. Also, there is another condition to turn off the stop blade, when the buffer station is in running mode. When there isn't any box on the second conveyor, in other words, the counter value is zero, the stop blade must be off. Therefore, boxes will be able to move from the first conveyor to the second one. Now, let's write a program to control the first conveyor, whose name is buffer conveyor. Naturally, when the system is not in running mode, then the buffer conveyor must be off. Also, if the system is in running mode, and there aren't any boxes on the second conveyor, in other words, the counter value is zero, the buffer conveyor must be on. Note that, there is another condition, that my controller must turn off the buffer conveyor, when it's in running mode. Naturally, when the system is in running mode, and the stop blade is enabled and also, there is a box behind the stop blade, my controller must turn off the first conveyor, until the current box on the second box is transferred completely. After that, the stop blade will be off, and the counter value will be zero. In consequence, my controller will run the first conveyor again. Alright, I've finished the programming step. Let me compile it. Well, here is an error. I've forgotten to write then, after the if condition. Again, let me compile the project to ensure there is no error. Alright, the programming step has been completed, related to the buffer station project. As you know, the next step is making a connection, between the program and the buffer station. Because this process was explained several times, during the previous videos, let's skip it. Note that, the project was tested in the previous video. So, all steps related to the buffer station project have been done. You may want to improve this project. For example, the potentiometer can be used to control the speed of the belt conveyors, or an emergency condition can be added. In the next video, I'll start a new project, to learn the CFC language. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.